we welcome you to the ADHD Smarter Parenting Podcast. Here to heal and elevate lives is your parenting coach, Siope Kinikini. Hey everybody, welcome. This is Siope with the Smarter Parenting Podcast. I'm so glad to be here. It's been a few weeks. I haven't been around. I actually had to take some time off. I had some things that I needed to take care of, and I was able to do that. So I'm back, and I'm actually super happy to be back and to talk to you today about something that a lot of parents struggle with, and that's with goal setting, especially with children with ADHD. And a lot of times with parents who have ADHD, and they're trying to set goals for their children. So I'm going to give you some tips on how you can work through setting effective goals for your child and for yourself while you're navigating this world of ADHD. There are three specific areas that I do want to cover during this podcast. So the three things that I want to go over during this podcast are the following. Number one, how to set goals effectively. So we will talk about what you need to consider when you are starting to create these goals. The second thing I want to cover is the focus on feelings when you are setting out your goals, the importance of that for people with ADHD. And then the last thing I want to cover is how to anchor the goals so you can accomplish it. Now, I've heard so many times from parents and from from children who struggle with goals because they feel overwhelmed by the goal or they feel like I cannot accomplish this goal and it will spiral me down into sadness, into just struggling even more. So I just don't bother with goals. Let me tell you the problem with that. First off, if you do not have a goal or somewhere where you want to go or achieve, you really are kind of just going through the motions of whatever is happening in front of you, which is not helpful for children with ADHD. We want our children to be able to plan ahead and to anticipate things that may pop up and prepare for them so they can accomplish things. So this goes for adults as well. We need to set goals. And even if they're small goals, if we can set them up appropriately, then children learn how goals can be more effective when they start setting more difficult goals along the way. Let's talk about the first one, okay? So how to set goals effectively. A lot of times when I meet with parents during our first session, it's like, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish during this intervention that we are going to have? And they give me a list and we can write that list down. Now, we have a list of things that they want to do. I want to clarify that when you do this initial list, when you are listing down all the things you want to accomplish, that's not a list of goals. That's a brain dump. You actually are just dumping everything in your brain onto a piece of paper that is coming up randomly. And so they all come at levels of importance. And sometimes we cannot differentiate between what is extremely important and what is not, because we're just getting rid of the information on a piece of paper. Now, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying absolutely do that. But you have to take time to step back and say, this list is not my goals. This is a brain dump of things that I would like to accomplish, but I need to set things that are more realistic. So you, what I recommend for parents to do, especially with children, is to choose one to three, maybe two items from the list to focus on first. Okay, so you are only going to choose one, two, or three things on the list. For younger children, I would focus on one thing. I would build on the strength of one goal and focus on that one goal for the week and then add a different goal once they're able to accomplish it. This makes it doable for your child. It also helps you build momentum as you go, because if you can accomplish smaller tasks, it actually pushes you forward to do more things effectively. So choosing one or three things, depending on the attention span of your child or what it is you feel like needs to be accomplished, that is essential. Do not overwhelm your child with a list. And I've seen parents do this too, where they've listed a chore chart with a lot of different things on there. Sometimes that is overwhelming for a child. It's better to list one item on a chore chart than to have five that the child is struggling with. Start with one. You can add something else later once they accomplish the first one and do fairly successful with that. So just be aware of the tolerance level of your child when they are working through accomplishing goals because we want things to move in a positive direction. Now, this brings me to the next point, which is When you are setting goals, you have to focus on the positive aspect of the goal. 
I've had a lot of parents write down, I want my child to stop crying. I want my child to stop yelling. I want my child to listen to me. Okay, now the listen to me is a little tricky, but the tricky part for a lot of parents is flipping that. And what is the positive side of that? I want my child to pay attention when I'm speaking to them. I want my child to, you know, acknowledge me by looking at me in the face. So those are more positive centered. Okay. We're not focused on what we don't want the child to do. We should be focused on what we want the child to do. This is a lot more difficult for parents than you would probably think. And it's a lot more difficult for adults. So if you're an adult and you're setting a goal, set your goals in the positive. I want to see this, not I don't want this to happen anymore. Okay, so set the goals in the positive. Now, when you set goals in the positive, again, this is building momentum in setting up your goals in order to help you accomplish these goals. And when you set it up in the positive, it actually gives a clear perception for your child and for yourself of exactly what you want. Because if your goal is, I don't want my child to yell anymore when I tell them no, if you're focused on that, that just tells the child what not to do, but it does not tell the child what they need to do, which would be something like, when I tell my child no, I want my child to accept it and not to argue back and be still and quiet. I want my child to accept it, say okay, and leave it alone. And we can talk about it later if they disagree. Okay, so those are some different ways of setting goals in the positive. Now, this is how you start setting up these effective goals. Let's move on to number two, which is feelings. When you're setting up goals for people with ADHD, it is essential that you focus on the feelings you want them to feel at the end of accomplishing a goal. Now, this is very different than a lot of other ways that people set up goals because in many ways they set up goals where they're like, I want to do this and accomplish this and then I know I'm done. For people with ADHD, we want to focus on how they are going to feel once the goal is accomplished. Because uh, people with ADHD, again, operate on high emotion. There is a podcast that I did a while ago on rejection-sensitive dysphoria, RSD. And if you haven't listened to it, I suggest you go back and listen to it. But people with ADHD tend to be highly sensitive to rejection. When they're rejected from things, they may take it more personally than say your average person. And so when we focus things more in the positives, this actually helps them process everything in a more positive light and in a more positive way. And if we focus our goals on feelings, on how they should feel, I will feel happy, accomplished. I will feel, you know, euphoric. I will feel complete. I will feel like I have finished everything. If you focus on the emotional aspect of it, it actually helps to create, again, this area where goals are focused in areas that are most important to the person who has ADHD. So feelings are essential to focus on when you're setting goals. A lot of parents will be like, well, we'll know this because this, and it's an action. And that's great. And in fact, the action is fine to talk about, but you need to couple that with a feeling, the feeling of accomplishment that your child or that you will feel when you accomplish that goal. Now, the last thing is to anchor your goals. And by anchoring, what I mean is, what are we going to do to firm up the goal so it is consistent and we can keep it going? The first thing is, once you choose the one to two or three things that you want to focus on as far as your goals, you need to go back and see what is realistic, okay? What is realistic in the time frame that you're setting the goal? If it's a week and you want your child to accept when you say no to them without arguing, then you have to ask yourself, can my child learn this in that time frame? Now, if they cannot, then say, okay, can we make this goal more appropriate for this child? Can we make it that they can do four out of five times they're able to accept no? rather than saying they're just going to completely do it. So you have some wiggle room in there to keep it as realistic to your child and their needs as possible. So go through that list and list things that are realistic, okay? The second thing is, I want you to protect your goals initially very carefully. A lot of people will post online or they'll share with everybody that this is their goal. I highly suggest you do not do that. I highly suggest that you keep it initially to yourself and to the person that you're working with or whatever goals you are setting with someone or with your child and you keep it between you. Because when you start to involve uh, the perception of other people, 
that can be a very crushing thing and it actually moves you into a negative space where you're doing things because you're afraid of what other people may think of your goal. Now, a lot of people say, hey, I need to tell other people for accountability. I get that. But you can measure accountability in a lot of different ways. One way could be you're just keeping track of how many times you're consistent through every day. That's a way to stay accountable by the end of the day. All right. We're looking for little wins along the way more than we're looking for absolute change in one day. So little wins on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because it's these little things that are going to make a huge difference in the overall success of your child in accomplishing these goals. Goals are essential and we need to set goals. We need to teach children how to set goals. And when they're able to set realistic goals and they're able to accomplish them, they are going to be more successful in their ability to navigate through life with work, with relationships, and with family. So it's really important. Now, the skill that I want you to focus on is the skill of decision making. You can find this skill on the Smarter Parenting website. There's a video there. It's not very long. Check it out. Watch the video. And it will go through the steps and you want to really make some good choices on what those goals will be that you initially want to start with. Now, there's one thing that I didn't mention in all of this in regards to setting goals. I want you to choose the goals that are doable first. Okay. And what I mean by that is we want to see success initially because success is momentum and momentum actually builds over time. So if we can get a child to successfully complete a goal over a period of time and they feel accomplished, the feelings are there because we've established that their goals are connected to their emotions. We've anchored it because we've kept them realistic. Uh, We've been able to just choose specific ones that fit. Okay, that's fitting all the criteria that I've talked about. If we're able to do that, it actually gives them the self-esteem they need to set more difficult goals in the future. So start off with simple goals first and then build from that. My wife, when she was in college, she had mentioned that that was some counsel that was given to her because she was overwhelmed with college work. And I found that to be completely true as well. She went to speak with an advisor. So one of her academic advisors, and uh, she was mentioning all the difficult classes she had. And the advisor just mentioned, well, how do you study? How do you prepare for these things? And my wife said, well, I take the most difficult subject and I do that first. And then so by the end, I have less energy uh, so I can do the easy stuff. Well, the advisor said, let's flip that. Why don't you do the easy stuff first so you build some momentum? By the time you get to the hard stuff, you are already on a roll. Emotionally, mentally, you are actually moving forward. And that may give you the push. And it worked for her. Now, I have also applied this principle in my own life. And let me tell you what I do in order to build momentum for my day. I start my day very specifically in that I start off with good intentions. I do not check my phone. I I actually tell myself, okay, these are the things I want to accomplish today. And again, I don't want to look at my phone because if I do, there'll be messages and emails there that will tell me and dictate to me what my day should look like. And I don't want to do that. So I want to intentionally set the tone for my day on the things that I want to do. And I also get up and I have things, I have this idea that if I can do something in less than a minute, I'm going to do it, which means I can make my bed because I can make my bed in less than a minute. It doesn't take that long to do. So I will do that. If I can, you know, wash the dishes that may be left over in the kitchen sink, then I will do that in the minute, which hardly ever happens because I usually do it the night before because it only takes a minute. But I I focus it on smaller increments of time at the beginning of my day. And then as my day progresses, I feel more accomplished. I'm more motivated by the time work comes along that I can sit down and actually do work because I'm not starting in this area where I am not feeling well. I'm actually feeling very accomplished by the time work rolls around. So I also take a walk, take a 30 minute walk in the mornings just out in nature just to enjoy nature and kind of disconnect. But again, these are things that I can do in order to build momentum over time. And that's what we want to do when we're setting goals with younger children. So set some goals that are realistic, that they can do, that are initially easier for them to do so they can feel accomplished and then start adding more difficulty as you go. It's the same principle in game theory. So 
when you are playing a video game, you usually start off on a level that's super easy. You feel accomplished. And so you continue and then they start making it more and more difficult as you go. This isn't brain science, folks. This is exactly how the brain works. And so what we're doing is we are using these concepts in order to help your child become more successful at goal setting and goal accomplishment. All right. So check out that skill on the Smarter Parenting website. It is decision making. Okay. Or, and it's called the SOTAS method, but go watch it because it will guide you through the process of how to make the best decisions on what goals you should initially start off with. All right. That's it for me. I am so glad to be back and I hope you are doing well wherever you are. Thank you for joining us and I will talk to you again soon. All right. Bye. Bye.